Hey guys, so this week we're going to study the soil profile and the soil erosion. Okay, so we're going to talk about this um, a little bit. So, okay. All right, so what is soil? Soil is a mixture of rock, minerals, um, mineral particles, and organic matter. So, soil is basically rock, minerals, and organic matter. Organic matter is like decayed stuff. So, if you threw your banana peel out and went back in a couple weeks and it was gone, it had turned into organic matter. So, how is it formed? Weathering forms the rocks and minerals of the soil. This is the inorganic part of the soil. So the organic matter or material in the soil comes from living things such as plant and animal remains. So here we talk about the soil profile. So the soil profile is a vertical cross section of the soil. Okay, so it's going vertical. It shows layers beneath the surface that vary depending on the location of the profile. So depending on where this part of that soil is depends on what part of the soil profile it is. And then top layers of a soil profile are the nutrient-rich parts. Okay, the reason being is because that is where the organic matter is. So, the soil horizons, each section of the soil um, is called a soil horizon. So, soil horizon is the layers of the soil profile used to classify the types of soil. So as you can see here, these are your soil horizons. These are your different parts of the soil horizons. So soil horizons, um, more mature soil has more horizons. Okay, so the longer the soil has been there or not been disturbed, the more horizons that that soil will have. It's going to take thousands of years for a soil to mature though. Okay, soil is home to a variety of Things such as burrowing animals, snails, worms, ants, um, fungi, and bacteria. All right, so our first step is the bedrock. So what is the bedrock made of? And make sure you're taking these notes, um, and I'll highlight what you need. Okay, so your bedrock, what is it made of? Solid rock. Okay, it is absolutely solid rock. Okay, what grows there? Absolutely nothing. Nothing can grow there. Okay. Um, what color is it? Gray or whatever color the rock is. So it doesn't just have to be gray. It can be um, whatever color the rock is. All right, so then your sea horizon. Okay, what is it made up of? Broken rock or and parent material. There's a little bit of parent material, um, but it's mostly broken up rock. Again, nothing can grow here because nothing's going to grow in rock. Um, what color is this layer? It's whatever color the rock is, basically. Um, the depth is about 30 to 48 feet. Then we get to our B horizon. Our B horizon is our subsoil. So this layer is made of humus, which is your organic matter, um, clay, and minerals such as iron and aluminum. Okay, so you're going to get a little bit of minerals into this part. Okay, so your iron and your aluminum. Um, still, nothing can quite grow here because it's too far down um, in the soil horizon. So what color is this? It's going to be mostly red and brown in color due to the clay and iron that is in the soil. Okay, so due to the clay and iron. And the depth is going to be about 30 or 10 to 30 feet. Now we're getting to our topsoil. So A is our topsoil. Okay, what is the list layer made of? Um, it's going to be small, fine soil particles, um, humus, and other organic matter. What's going to grow here is your plant roots, your fungi, your bacteria, your earthworms are going to house here. So th at this point, we're starting to get where our plant roots can um, reach to. So what color is this? It's going to be dark brown or black, depending on how much organic matter will determine if it there um, you see a lot of dark brown or black and then your depth is about two to ten feet so now we're in our O horizon our O horizon is our organic matter okay what's gonna what is this layer made of it's gonna be grass and decaying organic matter like plants leaves and insects so um, the decaying matter 
will eventually turn into organic matter. Okay, what lives and grows here? Plants, grass, insects. Um, this layer is going to be green, or it depends on what's living there, but mostly if you have grass, it's going to be green. And then your depth is you're going to be your zero to two feet. So it's going to be the very top layer, the top layer that you walk on. Okay, so that's what's there. So now we're going to talk about um, erosion in nature. Okay, so how does nature cause erosion? Okay, so what causes soil erosion? Um, nature. Okay, so example, wind, rain, oceans, rivers, natural disasters, all of that's going to cause um, soil erosion. So how can humans cause soil erosion? Um, human activity. Okay, so anything human activities. So plowing a field, construction, overwatering your yard. Okay, it's it could cause soil erosion. Overwatering your yard, you might not have enough plants in your yard to take up that amount of water. So those roots aren't going to hold on to that water and it's going to cause soil erosion over time. So the impact of soil erosion, okay, the top layers of the soil profile that are rich in nutrients are moved. Okay, the soil at that point is going to become poor due to lack of good soil quality. So whenever you have soil erosion, you're taking that rich soil and moving it away from that. Okay, so it's basically eliminating your rich nutrients in that soil. So the impact, um, the loss of topsoil, okay, topsoil provides the best root environment. Okay, it's going to give that best root environment by providing the best structure, the most air, and living organisms. The topsoil contains most of the soil's organic matter and plant nutrients. So soil quality is the ability of soil to perform functions that are essential for people and the environment. So our soil quality depends on how good is that soil at to perform functions that are essential for the people and the environment. So people and environment um, is what the soil quality means. So how does soil quality affect plants? Okay, so how does soil quality affect plants? You're just going to pick two, okay? Just going to pick two. All right, so the plants are the basis of the food chain. Okay, you think about it. If we want a hamburger, okay, it starts out we have to grow the feed that the animals need. Then the animals eat that plant. Okay, they process it and grow muscle. Then we eat that. We slaughter the cow and then we eat the hamburger. Okay, so the plant is the basis of that food chain. Plants rely on good soil quality in order to grow. If you don't have good soil quality, your plants aren't going to grow because they're not going to have nutrients. And then they provide nutrients for our animals and our humans. So we eat plants. How does soil quality affect animals? Okay, so think about it this way. How soil quality affects animals. Animals rely on plants for nutrition. Okay, animals, a lot of animals eat grass and eat plants for their nutrition. So soil quality affects pastures and grazing lands. So if my, in my pasture, my cow, cattle pasture, if my, if I had a problem with soil erosion and my grass didn't grow, my cows wouldn't have anything to eat. So soil quality can also affect the habitat that animals live in. If you have soil erosion, the a lot of the trees are not going to have good root structure, so the animals might not have a place to live either. So how can soil quality be tested? So soil test is um, analysis, it analyzes the nutrients, the organic matter, the pollutants in the soil. If you do a soil test, um, you send it to Raleigh. I actually just did mine um, in the summer, okay, in the summer. And there's a certain time of the year you can do a soil test and send it into Raleigh and they do it for free. But other times of the year you have to pay for it. Um, and it's just going to tell you how much nutrients is in, what organic life you have, and the pollutants in your soil. A tissue test, okay, a test analyzes the leaves and the foliage of plants. And this is going to determine the nutrients in the plants itself. So this is, a tissue test is not necessarily looking at your soil. It's, it is kind of looking at your soil, but it's not directly using your soul to determine. Okay, you're going to take a tissue part of that plant 
and it will tell you what nutrients are in that plant, okay? So that's the end of the lecture. So what I want you to do is take a picture of these notes um, and upload them to the Canvas page. If you have any questions, send Ms. Wallace an email.